If you buy scratch off lottery tickets here in Washington, you could be playing a game where the grand prize has already been claimed. What our two on your side investigation found tonight. Still tracking some rain and snow across the inland northwest, but I promise some warmer weather is on the way. I couldn't believe it. After five years, there's still trucking around with my car. Her car was stolen five years ago in Bellingham. So imagine her surprise when she got a parking ticket from a private lot right here in Spokane. The latest on the investigation tonight. We are kicking things off with a live look outside of downtown Spokane. For the second day in a row, our temperatures topped out above freezing in Spokane today, but parts of the inland northwest are still dealing with slick conditions, prompting some school delays and closures. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is off tonight. We'll start tonight with a look at the weather. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick standing by in the Weather Center with what we can expect for the morning commute tomorrow, Thomas. Yeah, Mark, even though we got rain today, that wasn't really the issue. The issue now is what happens next. And with freezing conditions during the overnight hours, well, all that water is going to refreeze back into some black ice. That is why we're already seeing some slick conditions even now that the precipitation has come to an end in many locations still doing. I'm going to say something because it's been a mix between rain and snow most of the day, so it's doing something out in Coeur d'Alene and St. Mary's right now, but all this is slowly pushing off eastward. So for most areas, even over the Palouse, not seeing any uh, precipitation at the moment. It's also cleared up in the Lewiston area as well. The only winter weather advisory is over the lookout pass area as well as St. Mary's one to three inches of snow possible. Really, it's probably going to be near the the low end of those estimates up to five inches on some of the mountain peaks throughout the day tomorrow. But look at the temperatures now 25 in Spokane, 27 Pullman, 23 Ritzville. Basically, everybody's back below the freezing mark. So all that rain and the melted snow from earlier today is refreezing at this moment. So there will be icy roads tomorrow, even though that snow is basically coming to an end. Also a small chance for some blowing snow as well. So some lingering weather uh, implications for tomorrow morning, even though that most of this is out of the way. But I'll let you know what other impacts that'll have in the days to come. That full forecast in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you. Well, with freezing weather in the forecast, there will be a number of school delays and closures for tomorrow. The La Crosse, Lind, Ritzville, Nespelum, Odessa and Washtuckna school districts will all be opening two hours late tomorrow. Moses Lake Christian Academy and the Moses Lake School District will be closed tomorrow and will post any additional delays or closures on our website. That's creme.com. In other news, a woman from Bellingham, Washington reached out to us tonight with quite the story. She recently received a parking ticket from a private lot in Spokane. But here's the thing. Her car, the one cited here, was stolen five years ago and she hasn't seen it since. Here's Krem 2's Casey Decker. Five years ago, Katie Nickel walked out of a grocery store in Bellingham to find an empty spot where her car once stood. It took a second for it to set in, but she soon realized the car had been stolen. Once I realized it was gone, I literally sat down and cried in the middle of the parking lot. She went to Bellingham police, who she says told her the odds of getting it back were pretty slim. I, I was not getting my hopes up, but I still held out hope, you know what I mean? Like... I mean, every time I saw a little red Honda drive by on the road, even all the way up till just a couple weeks ago, I'd be bitter. And she had reason to be bitter, too. The car theft resulted in a series of even bigger losses in her life. I ended up losing my job because I couldn't make it to work. And then I lost my home because I couldn't work. So it was rough. It was really rough there for a while. She eventually got back on her feet and moved on with her life. Then... Five years later, this came in the mail, a parking ticket on the car that had been stolen from her so long ago. That ticket came from here, a private parking lot in downtown Spokane, nearly 250 miles away. At first I was like, what is this? I've never been to Spokane, you know? Um, so I called them, they got it revoked, and then I looked over it more thoroughly, and I noticed the license plate looked a little familiar. And so I back-checked it, and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is my Honda's license plate. The parking company forgave the ticket and offered to send her the photo they had taken of the car. Here's that photo, not helpful. But still, Katie had renewed hope. It's like a, I don't know, a fire just got lit. We asked Spokane police about it. Sergeant Terry Prudinger offered to help look into it himself. I'm also probably going to run down and just see where the ticket was issued and take a look around, see if we see any cameras, see if they have any kind of attended parking. Um, basically look for 
kind of it's a long shot for clues, but anything that would lead us to need to find out who had the car. Nickel has also done some detective work on her own. I literally called every business on that block, seeing if they had any surveillance, like anything. They didn't, but Pruninger says that doesn't mean none can be found. Sometimes we get lucky. Um, I've worked cases where you go to adjoining businesses and they have no video or the video is not very good quality, but somebody else has a much better system a little bit farther away. Due to the poor quality of that photo, there is still the possibility it's not actually Katie's original car and only her license plate. But Katie says getting the car back isn't really her priority anymore. She mostly just wants to see justice done. So many emotions were going through my head. I couldn't believe it. After five years, they're still trucking around with my car. First, there was a lot of anger. Um, And then, I don't know, I pity almost now and just what has to go wrong with your life to ruin someone else's like that you know in spokane casey decker crem 2 news i am surprised that you agreed to do it why are you sitting down with us today i'm very tired of all of the uh lies i've been hearing things and you know and seeing things on the blogs and you know i'm just i'm just tired CBS's Gail King's emotional interview with R. Kelly aired this morning. In it, Kelly vehemently denied all sex abuse accusations made against him, including that he had controlling sexually abusive relationships with girls under the age of 18. His day began with that interview and ended with a trip to jail. Kelly told judge, a judge this afternoon he could not pay $161,000 back in child support to his ex-wife. His publicist says Kelly was prepared to pay fifty to $60,000. He explained he couldn't pay the full amount because he hasn't been able to work. A spokesman for the Cook County Sheriff's Office said Kelly would not be released from jail until he pays the full child support debt. His next hearing is scheduled for March 13th. Cool. Robert, Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave you 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Are y'all trying to kill me? You're killing me, man. Well, if you missed it, you can see Gail King's full interview with R. Kelly and his two current girlfriends Friday at 8 p.m. We have new information tonight about the alleged murder of Kelsey Barrett, a Colorado mother with family ties to North Idaho. Barrett went missing on Thanksgiving Day. Court documents detail the first conversations Barrett's fiance, the primary suspect in her disappearance, had with law enforcement. Patrick Frazee told authorities the two were having relationship problems and that Barrett suggested a separation. Search warrants also detail a Facebook post from a woman with the same name as Patrick Frazee's mother saying, quote, yeah, the witch is dead, unquote. It was posted the day Barrett went missing. Washington Governor Jay Inslee, who announced last week he's running for president, is campaigning in Iowa. The Iowa caucuses, the first to help choose a Democratic nominee for president, is 11 months away. I've I've been the governor while we've created the best economy in the United States. While we're doing things like the best paid family leave, great minimum wage increase, first net neutrality, we've ended the death penalty, we've legalized marijuana, we've got the best voting rights in America. I want to bring the progress in my state to the rest of the United States. Governor Inslee took a trip to a solar company during his visit. He has made climate change and renewable energy top issues in his campaign. A super PAC supporting Inslee also unveiled its first TV campaign ad for the candidate. It is part of a $1 million advertising buy in Iowa. Still ahead tonight, if you buy scratch off lottery tickets, you could be playing a game where the top prize has already been claimed. Our two on your side investigation coming up next.